Are you ready for this? I'm ready. No? Uh oh, are we ready? I, I we're know. gonna have to be. <laughs> well, you know, when it's live, it's live. And it's... you know, uh, normally, <laughs> normally we would be live in the Nutmeg Tavern, but today we are live in the German kitchen yeah. for the first ever cook live. <sighs> this, we have no idea how this is gonna work. This is gonna be crazy time. Yes, it are is. Are you ready, Michael? Uh, let's forge ahead, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Welcome everyone out there to this live stream. I'm your host, John Townsend, and I have a very special guest, Ryan. No, <laughs> <laughs> my special guest is this guy right here, Michael Drago. Um, he has uh, been a thorn in our side for years and years. Yes, that's and, quite true. Um, We're not saying nice things today. No, no, he's been a wonderful <laughs> guest nice. <laughs> and a good friend. For years and years, uh, I don't know how long is it. How, when did we do I the first think, episode together? I think it's been eight, eight years. Yeah, eight years. Wow. Yeah. Woo. Time yeah. goes slow while you're having. Fun. Yep. What? But I, I was just I was concurring. Oh, he was concurring because Ryan's he came over on there. board right before I did. Right. Yeah. Normally you would see Ryan, but uh, he's still in the bar, so you know. <laughs> but you'll be able to hear him. He's still locked in my cage. <laughs> yeah, you'll All be able right. to hear him nonetheless. Uh, anyway, this guy is, uh, he's called Michael Dragoo. I don't yeah, know why. That's just... And uh, he's also known as Ben Franklin here on the channel. Yeah. Mushrooms. <laughs> and all that. Yeah, yeah. And um, this, we're doing a lot of firsts here today because it was like the first live stream cooking in this location, the second time we've ever live streamed from this location, um, and first time cooking, and just lots and lots of, and the first time we've ever had to deal with a particular cookbook that <laughs> is not a not a specifically period facsimile cookbook, yep. but a cookbook that is about 18th century cooking, written by this Michael Dragu guy. Feller, yeah. Right, so this guy um, did a cookbook, and here it is. Here it is, it's called Colonial Comfort Foods. Yep. I feel comfortable just holding it in my hands. Uh, that's what we want. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it is now. Available. Uh, it's kind of pre-order. Um, there, there. Um, we've got a few copies, but more than likely, um, uh, you can order them. Uh, there'll be a link in the description section in the chat, and, and I all... just dropped it in the chat. Yeah. So cool. uh, you can. Um, what do you think, Michael? It's been a labor of love, and I'm really proud of it. When did you start on this? Well, the idea was three years ago. I, I retired after 47 years of being in the leisure industry and as a marketing director or marketing communications director um, and then I was full time at it in January so full time at this and yeah at this yeah yeah, 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 yeah. so so very nice yeah. uh, wonderful cookbook with how many recipes in it 75 plus a couple so more than 75 more, more than 75 and yeah. uh, big full color pictures yeah. of pretty food, uh, some things we've done on the channel, some things we yep. haven't done on yep. the channel. Um, all kind of picked and choosed out of, picked and choosed, um, drawn from 18th century cookbooks, yeah. maybe some 19th century cookbooks. Um, really neat selection. What, what are they gonna find in here? Well, there are seven sections. It takes you through hors d'oeuvres and made dishes and main dishes and, and there's sweets and baking and and the bra, the soups and bras, and then uh, um, everything. It's it's yeah, and um, I have ten recipes in each except the uh, the bras, and I had so many choices that I wound up picking fifteen. Right. That's one of my favorite sections, actually. You wouldn't think no that. No ice cream. No ice cream. Nope. Well, guys, nope. maybe the next cookbook will be all ice cream. Do that one for me. Okay. No. <laughs> anyway. You know what? We'll see. Some people are just no fun. We'll see. So we're gonna. Well, not maybe. Maybe um, Michael's gonna do most of the cooking. Anyway, we're gonna cook some of these. Yep. Well, not some. One maybe that we do isn't in here. <laughs> are you okay? And a cup. What? Okay, carry on. Uh, well, okay, so a couple of uh, recipes from the cookbook, yep. and maybe one that isn't from the cookbook, just as for fun. Yep. 
And um, wow. So what do we do now? Where, where are we at? Are we going to well, start we're ready to start if you what want. Do you what, what, do you, what do you have first up for uh, us? The first one is called Potato Balls. It's uh, for, from uh, Mary Randolph's 1824 recipe. Mm. And I've got mm -hmm. the, the ingredients over here. It's, it's mashed potatoes. You roll it in a small ball. And um, you dip it in egg wash. You put it in breadcrumbs. You put it in oil. And what could go wrong? Eat Can like you... hedonistic little monsters. That's, Michael, that's what we're going to try first. Michael, will you show us that page in the cookbook and read the recipe? Oh, sure. It's, um, I don't have the, well, page 83. You, there we Let's go. Do that. OK. Uh-uh. This uh, one's uh, uh, is 70, what do you eat? Each one, two, three. This is that isn't the right one. 85. 85. <laughs> I was like, your other 80. It's like, that's the weirdest looking potato ball I ever saw. Uh, <laughs> Mix, so, mash. So, so, okay, here we are. And in, in, in every case, I give you the recipe just as it was written. I give you helpful hints. I, I explain phrases or words um, that we don't know now. Um, I have the list of ingredients, the recipe itself, and then sometimes I have a you don't say. That might be the history of the author. It might be the history of some element in there, but it ties in with, with that. Um, so this is a simple little recipe. It's um, mix mashed potatoes with the yolk of an egg, roll them into balls, flour them, or cover them with egg and breadcrumbs. Fry them in clean dripping or brown them in a Dutch oven. They are an agreeable vegetable relish and a supper dish. So this is uh, one of the made uh, uh, dishes or uh, um, dishes that would accompany um, a main dish. Um, sometimes they're taking a vegetable and doing things to it and surrounding the serving dish with it. Sometimes it's just a side dish. This is one of those that you can do either way. So when they were making mashed potatoes at the time, it's just put boiling potatoes the way we would do now. A lot of cream, a lot of butter, salt and pepper. It's no different than what we do now. So that's what I've done. And I've already taken the to, I've already rolled them in balls, and we're gonna uh, dip them in the egg wash, um, uh, put them in the breadcrumbs, and fry them. Well, let's see what we got yep. here. Uh, they look like I mean, potato balls. Eat it like that. <laughs> we could. And, uh, so I've got go. the breadcrumbs and the egg wash. So lots of expensive ingredients. This is all of these. If they're Michael proof, all these are Michael proof. So there's no reason why you can't do them. I didn't. <laughs> <clears throat> As you should probably know by now, realize by now, I'm not so good at following direction or following instruction. And <laughs> there's no reason to, to be scared off of these things. You know, um, I'm, I am you. I've maybe done a little more research, but I am not. I have no foodways degree in, in the colonial time period or anything like that. I, I just, it's a hobby, it's a love, it's a passion. And so I've picked things that are easy to do, and uh, this is one of them. So shall we? Yeah, let's find We're out. Gonna, we shall. So apparently these can fail. Um, uh, when um, <laughs> you have, in there. I, what I found was um, they need to be refrigerated after um, they're cooked. Uh, that works a lot better. Refrigerated after they're cooked. Yeah, just be, because uh, when they have that in here, did yeah. Mary Randolph talk about refrigerating them? No, but I I'm telling you that if you don't want a failure, uh, put them in the <laughs> fridge, and they'll they'll behave. They won't develop bad personal habits that way. So uh, there's a question in the chat for you, Michael. Yep. Says, does, so does the cookbook give modern instructions along with the historical text? That would be very helpful. Yes, yes, and that's what took the longest. I was All of these were two, three, four times sometimes, trying to figure out the temps, the times, you know, and just, just trying to figure out sometimes how to prepare it the way they described it. Um, because in this time period, Fahrenheit de de develops the thermometer in 1707, I think, but, but nobody's can afford one even now. And up through the Civil War, they're talking about um, brisk ovens or slow ovens or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I have a chart that, that, that describes what those different oven temps really mean when you're using your oven at home. Um, and I talk you through the things so you don't have to have a problem. You want to keep doing it? I'm going to put some in the yep. uh, oil if you don't mind. Okay. So Vigilant Com Cosmic Penguin says, I hate it when my food developed bad personal habits. Yeah, yeah, well, these, these will in a hurry. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to make them special over here. There we go. Roll these around. Well, that sound tells you that it's going to be good. Right. Anything pan fried is delicious. Yeah. Careful. 
hey, tell me on the last uh, the last episode that we posted in the chat, did you guys did you guys think that the the deep fried eggs seem kind of strange? Do you think they look delicious? What do you think? Tell us in the chat. I will say that they were they were quite delicious. These better be good. That's all I can say. This is so much work. <laughs> How they smell over there, Michael? They smell. I mean, they might not make it back to the table. <laughs> you know, these are missing spice. Do what? They're, they're missing a spice. Well, let's let's not. <laughs> yeah. Don't you wish you could be cooked with John every day, Michael? He, he is, is truly the necromancer of nutmeg. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> These that, are, oh, oh, oh go ahead. I didn't do that. I didn't break them. No, no, you're good. It's all, you all good. <clears throat> all fixed. All good. You're good. Mm -hmm. Ashley counts in super chat. Congratulations, Michael. I'm uh, sure so much hard work went into this. I love the concept and it looks beautiful. See you at five medals. Oh, I don't know who that is. Who is that? It's Ashley LeCount. Ashley LeCount. Yes, yeah. she will. She, uh, she is a rabid follower of you guys. So when's five medals coming up? Uh, I, think I think it's, it's the 4th, it's, it's the 22nd and 23rd okay. of October. Of October, yeah. Yeah. I need to borrow this second. It's going to be a great event. One, it's at uh, in League of Indiana. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's along the, the um, Fort Wayne, Wayne Fort Dearborn, Dearborn Trail. trail. Um, Fort Dearborn turns into Chicago <laughs> later on. Here, you stuff all your eggs. Right. I don't, well, you want to try one without, so. There we go. There we go, buddy. Did I ever tell you about that, that experience that I had looking for any sign of Fort Dearborn in Chicago, Michael? It's, it's on a side yeah, it's just like, it's <laughs> yeah. a, I was like, it's supposed to be right around here, and I couldn't find it. I looked down, and I was it's, standing on like a little plaque like yeah. the size of a softball. Is it on the uh, whatever <laughs> mile they call it? Magnificent think, mile. Is it? I'm pretty sure it is. Well, I can't remember the crossroads. Hey, yeah. There you go. Have good luck with that one. And there's a there's a be bridge. Gentle. Be gentle with it. I'm gonna. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why we normally do this is cooking not made up for children. <laughs> we do normally do these. Okay. Uh, Aaron, did you see the the props, the nice camera work on this live stream? Thank you. We gotta give we gotta give a little credit to our boy Caleb too, who's back here helping us. Nothing smells burnt. Yeah. Well, I'll give us time. <laughs> uh, I'm stealing one of these claws here. There. There we go. All done. Let these go for just a little bit. If you if these recipes were too complicated, you'd have a couple of strikeouts and then you'd get annoyed and, and not uh, not continue with them. The the whole angle of this cookbook is to relate your ancestors to the foods they might have um, enjoyed, um, and you can go back to nothing more than your grandmother or your ten times removed grandmother. It, it's um, and it doesn't matter where you're from. You can find a handful of recipes from wherever that is. Hang on just a second. And um, I'm, I'm using, using my, my own examples. examples. I happen to have seven moves in my family's history from France, um, just west of Rochefort on the Atlantic, um, to uh, Bristol, England, and then to um, Staten Island, which was a Dutch Huguenot colony. My relatives were. Christian or um, Protestants rather, and um, at a time when the King of England was deciding that France was going to be very Catholic. And so we escaped and were taken in by the English. And then um, between 1699 and 1704, we show up on Staten Island. I have um, baptismal records of the group that comes across the two brothers um, of their kids. So between that time, they set sail, and two to four months later, they're here. Um, and then they move again. I almost think we were loyalists. The times that we're moving and the times that strife is happening here. 
I got a couple more and we're done. Yeah, that one, that one, no. In any event, I, I gathered some recipes from the different places we were and um, got my kids and my, and, and my wife, Deb, together and we prepared a meal uh, from uh, 1650s, coastal, uh, south coastal France, and then we prepared one the next night from uh, um, 1700 uh, England, Bristol, England, and we had a riot. We all had hands on board and, and we just did a multi-course um, meal. Can we take it, some wood off that fire? Yeah. Yes, I will. <laughs> Let me turn on the wood knob. Here we go. <laughs> you wanna? We would cook with wood, except yeah. we'd fill this place with smoke so fast. And yeah. Then the live stream would end. <laughs> we were. So. Um, you wanna give it a shot here? Mm, it's I potato, don't know. It's mashed potatoes, salt and pepper, copious amounts of butter. Pounds uh, of butter. Okay, well tell us real quick before you eat them, yeah. because I'm sure they're still really hot. Right. Tell us tell us real quick, what are the helpful hints for this dish if they want to try this at home? What would you, what would you recommend? Oh, my helpful hints, uh, mixed mashed potatoes. Um, we'll make up a batch of mashed potatoes using four large Yukon Golds or russets. Those were available in this time period. Um, peel the potatoes and cut them in half inch slices, boil until tender, drain and mash with a potato masher. These are not whipped, they're mashed. Um, add copious amounts of butter and heavy cream. In parentheses, I say you only live once. Uh, <laughs> make this mix a little stiffer than, you norm than your normal mashed potatoes. Add salt and pepper to taste and set aside to cool. Once cooled, mix in the egg yolks. We don't want the eggs to scramble. And refrigerate so the mixture is easier to work. And then uh, the next one is with the yolk of an egg is what the recipe reads. <laughs> and I say that the egg yolk will help the potatoes, potato mixture to set up when fried and not flatten or fall apart in the pan. Because you, we're putting these in hot lard, but you can also fry them in a pan. I've done them both ways. The ones in the cookbook are in the lard because they stay whole. They don't, yeah. they wanna, as they warm up, they just wanna squat a little bit, just as I do. Uh, and then clean dripping uh, is referred to in here. And I say is referring to the drippings from a cut of meat cooked in front of a fire, referred to as gravy or drippings in this time period. I've had the best results using either full immersion frying with lard or baking them in the oven. My stovetop results have been poor because they want to fall apart as you continually turn them, trying to set the egg mixture. So that's what I do for helpful hints, mm. every way through. It's not baby talk, it's not talking down, it's just, here's what I stumbled in across and this is how I fixed it. So, um, and sometimes you and I will be figuring this out together. I never was positive um, what they meant, but I guessed from my experience and, um, and it works so, and I would love to hear back when you, if you find that there's a different meaning that I was mistaken on, because the nice thing about digital printing is you can change things. So I'm gonna starve to death if you keep talking. Well, you oh my goodness. Is this, are you, <laughs> finger food, let's do it, come on. All right. I'm gonna have this one, I, I, I would rename it if it was a modern cookbook. Toast. Uh, uh, it's a stuffed is, mushroom. Well, <laughs> Did you just toast them? Oh yeah, hey man. It looks like a meteorite. That's. It does. Fallen to earth. I'm gonna eat this pretty soon. Hopefully better tasting than. <laughs> this might be the longest hour and a half you've ever spent. These are good. These are better than the ones I did <laughs> in there. What do you think, John? Tasty? Yeah, say yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> when I baked them in the oven, it's a crispier, surrounding um, and it's a different taste it, it's more of a crunch these are a little softer but we've been yakking them probably the steam I think 15, is 15 20 something. minutes yeah. so yeah oh, um, man. they're really good yeah you might make them a little bit smaller if you want them to hold up right and cook all the way through that depends on you know how long you're cooking them and yep. and um, what I mean if you're you know we would just like serve them up like this right but in that time period, again, you were talking about putting them around something, yep. and if they were smaller, they might be a little more decorative, or, yep. you know, that kind of thing. <clears throat> yep. Very, very good. And they don't very say, nice. and I, I, I told you an inch, inch, inch and a half, but right, any size, they'll yep. cook the same. Um, I like that disaster one better. Yeah, you, it's going to hide here. Do you think they could use a little dusting of nutmeg? I don't have... I'm nutmegless. I'm sorry. 
Well, somebody made me clean this joint up. Woo! Oh! There we are. With contempt. Oh, oh my heavens. Now, now we're gonna now cook we're right. cooking with nutmeg. Yeah! <laughs> That's a mm. glorious sound. It is. And yet I sit bolt upright in the middle of the night when I hear that sound. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating another way. Say something. I'm gonna eat this. Well, um, I think it's... This is really good. Oh. Much better? Oh. <laughs> Let me tell you. I knew something was missing. You? Very nice. A therapist would write out theses on you. Oh, man. Just mm. think about that. Mm. All right, so that's one. Hey, real quick, can we go to the card? We got to fix something on that camera. Okay. Real quick. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. No disasters are happening. Okay. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right. You know, we could even, we, we could hand, we could make those guys eat them. We could. I don't know. Go that way. think, guys? Let's try it. You guys want any of these? But we never get to feed them, and they get so yippy when they're hungry. <clears throat> so real quick, I'm going to go through some super chats, and you guys can clean up and reset for the next All recipe. Right, stay. Um, Speed and Style Tony is in super chat. To Michael and John and crew, thanks for sharing all of your knowledge with us live and in press. Well, you're Thank welcome. You. It's our pleasure. Max Your Cool says, super funny live stream. Pulling this together is amazing. I'm not <laughs> sure folks will all understand what it takes to do this kind of thing live. Well, let's not... Yeah, it's not done yet, guys. We pull this together <laughs> yet. I, I, the lug nuts are loose. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> and there's a cliff and there's a wood. Amanda Marie is in Super Chat. I'm so excited for this cookbook. I've been trying to make my own ancestor cookbook for family for several years. Bigger project than I thought. This will be so amazing to read. Thank you. And B. Stoker says nutmeg hype. <laughs> Which, of course, yes. Yeah. Now, we're going to go ahead and drop this cookbook link in the chat one more time for the folks that haven't seen it yet. Cool. And uh, just so you guys know, this is live for the first day, this link for the cookbook. And it is available right now. Uh, it's Michael's new cookbook. And you guys, why don't you recap a little bit about this cookbook, John, so that folks know what we're talking mm -hmm. about. Colonial Comfort Foods, written by the amazing author, Michael Dragoo. That's nice. <laughs> See, anyway, uh, Michael's done this amazing job of finding 18th century and some early 19th century recipes, putting them together in this wonderful cookbook, uh, big pictures, full color pictures, and and uh, the recipe, and then the modern oh, uh, um, take on that recipe. Um, and it's big and mo it's available in soft and hard covers. You can find it on our website. You can check out the link in the chat, in the description. Michael, again, give us that, that short version of... <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> or I'm, I am Who combining... <sighs> what do you think? Our country's history is short, and I think many folks just don't care or don't know how to, to care about... Um, to find their relatives. And, and I think it's really important that we do try. Um, I used my own examples. I was fortunate to be able to get back to early 1600s France. Um, it is what it is. If you can't get back any farther than some place in Africa because there was enslavement, you can still, these days, spin a tube, send it in, come back, and they will tell you where on that continent 
oh, um, yeah. you are yeah. likely from. And it, it doesn't matter where on earth you were. Once you know that, and if you have some idea, even within a hundred years, of when those folks were there, um, you can find out uh, what recipes were happening then. I like, I've combined my family history with the foods they ate, and that's what this is all about, and I'm encouraging you to do the same. I used my own examples, but... Yeah. How many so, recipes are in this book? 75 plus a couple. Okay. And I think it's also important to say that not only did Michael go through all of the recipes to find which ones that he wanted, but he also took all the pictures, and they look fantastic. Yeah. Good job, Michael. It's a well, great book. Help from a lot of friends, but uh, I'm very fortunate to have the friends I have, but... Thank so, you. What are we cooking? Well, this one is one you guys have done a video on. It's in the cookbook. I like it a lot. It's it's um, uh, fried onions with Parmesan cheese. So it's a, a basic batter. I can read the recipe in a moment. And we're going to add Parmesan cheese to it. And then we're going to dip the uh, onion rings in them and, and fry them once again in lard because that's what we do. So here's the recipe. Look, good it's mom. from 1802 John Mollard. Pair six large mild onions. In this time the English were using white onions um, and cut them into round slices of a half of an inch thick. Then make a batter with flour, half a gill of cream, which is half a cup, um, excuse me, a quarter cup, yeah. um, a, a little pepper, salt, and three eggs. Beat them up for 10 minutes, after which add a quarter of a pound of Parmesan cheese, grated fine and mixed well together, to which add the onions. Have ready boiling lard, then take the slices of onions cut out of the batter um, with a fork. A fork. Singly and fry them gently until done of a nice color brown. And they're going to drain them and we're going to consume them. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Parmesan cheese, with, I, we're always referring to me as Ben Franklin, it was his favorite cheese. And I found a, a letter from a doctor to Mr. Franklin uh, giving him a recipe on how to how to make his own Parmesan cheese. So, I, are we ready? You want to share a fun fact about this recipe? Yeah, yeah. This was the very first cooking video that I came out to the shoot after huh. I started working here. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I've, I've graded. Having flashbacks? <laughs> I'm terrified. <laughs> more <Just> terrified. <laughs> more. Yeah. Do you want to put in uh, Parmesan to your liking? All of this? No. Here, I'll oh, well, what was the point? I was, I was just going to go boom. Has the Parmesan been dusted with nutmeg? No, no, he hasn't put what any is wrong with in you? this. What is wrong with you? <laughs> See, I already was like, hmm, wonder her. Hey, Michael, look over there. <laughs> it's going to be hard for you to get home when your tires are flat. <laughs> I cannot believe it. And I can't even take it home now. I'm a gag putting this on pizza. I think that hot, that's too hot over there. <laughs> oh, wise guy. <laughs> All right. Boy, this is gooey. Yeah, it's drag gooey. Unbelievable. Um, so the original recipe probably, now he says half inch thick. That's crazy. And he doesn't talk about splitting them up into rings. We're going to split them up into rings because yeah, we're not, good. obviously. Make them <laughs> an inch thick. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why don't just toss the onion in whole? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so if you want to. Okay. okay, I'm standing over here. <laughs> yeah. uh, Michael, what? Uh, I'm uh, sure you've got your shield. Yeah. If he's blinded during this uh, live stream, <laughs> I am not taking responsibility. You witnessed it here. Um, so, yikes. Man, oh man. Boy, that's... It's a tough crowd. Just toss them all in there. No. <laughs> I want to keep my oil. I, you know, I, I want to speed this process up. We're good. We're good. There we go. <laughs> what? <laughs> if looks could kill, he'd go home in a bag. <laughs> all right, you want to keep doing that? Careful. Careful. Oh. You want me to do that? No. I mean, you better watch those. Bad things might be happening over there. <laughs> In which case, I want to be here. <laughs> oh, okay. Did you guys try those potato things? Yes. Were I they did. good? I don't know if anybody else did. They were good. Yes, it was good. Very yummy. Thank you. Yep. I was surprised at how 
crunchy the crust was on the outside. Yeah, and it's even crunchier in the oven. I wouldn't try instant potatoes. I would try the real thing, please, because they will fall apart, the other ones. Instant potatoes? Yeah. We don't even know what those are. Sacrilege, huh? Careful what you're stepping on there. Yep. So, somebody, I don't know what that is. I thought I had a comment to read, and now I just look like a fool. That might be over hot there. It is over hot. It's a lot of Take another log off that fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is getting a, getting a little over. Can I have your plate, please? Yeah. Thank you over hot. You're going to hit him with it. <laughs> We'll be doing elephant ears later on, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, one thing that we haven't mentioned about this cookbook yet is that it has a foreword by John Townsend in it. Somebody must have tricked me while I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, uh, it was a weak moment. Those, those look, look really good. You just agreeing to do it was a weak moment. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> do you want me to do more of that? Well, I'm sure somebody will eat them. All right. The I ivy will. Ivy will. You can't feed them to the dog, but you know. Nah, probably not a good idea. Of course, a little more nutmeg would probably make them. I think they're set. I don't better. think they anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, look at that. I'm ready to turn those in it. Yes, Dave, this is completely non scripted. If I'd written the script, they wouldn't have followed it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. Dave, Dave, Dave. Let's see. Mm. Not cooking quite so fast. That's good. Yeah, that's better. Want to try them? You want to wait? Oh, uh, why not? Yep. Why not? There we go. To it. So, is this breading is this breading uh, specific to the recipe, or is this something that you just kind of cooked up? Well, I have a, a batter recipe in the cookbook, and that's uh -huh. what I used. Still too and hot. It's a. Um, hmm? It's still too hot. Go ahead. Okay. It's a. It's a modern beer batter. Um, okay. I think we used it just the last video as we shot. Um, it's just a basic batter. It's it's excellent by itself. It's nuts better with the parmesan that i've had that on a couple different things so Maybe. not only do you have finished dishes in this cookbook but you also have things like a batter recipe and some sauces and and you go into even some spice detail and help explain what people are what they're talking about in the 18th century cookbooks yeah yeah, yeah. Um, it, that's it, why i said 70 something yeah. the set there are 75 recipes that are actual um, I mean, the ah, batter here is simple, you know. Recipes, but um, then I, I give you a shortcut. If you don't have a microbrewery near you, they're talking about um, Barm and Settlins and Brewer's Yeast all the time. And so I, I give you a way to kind of cheat it to get the taste, but still using those little packets of Fleischmann's um, if you don't have the um, accelerant. But if you can get to a microbrewery, um, and either get the foam from the top of that process or after they've r removed the liquid from the barrels and used the stuff that's fallen to the bottom, that's called settlins. When they're saying two spoonsfuls of yeast, that's what they're meaning, brewer's yeast or barm. So, and then I tell you other ways to get there, but I tell you a recipe for how to do that. I've got a recipe for um, just a basic, basic breads uh, without yeast and I've got a recipe for force meat. You wouldn't necessarily have force meat by itself, but you turn that into other things. It can be a stuffing, it can be a wrap, it can be a ball. You know, we did, I think we did a video on force meat balls, which is a meatball, but mm. it's just another way of getting there. So I gave her some cheater recipes to, so you wouldn't be inconvenienced. In all of these cases, um, you, you should be able to get this, these, these ingredients from a, a, a better uh, big box store. I've given you a list of uh, suppliers in the back uh, there's a place that offers um, around 800 cheeses, authentic cheeses, um, time period correct uh, coffees and teas from Charleston. There, there's a lot of uh, 
helpful hints in the back there on how to get there if you want to. Cheshire cheese is a little tough to find. There are places to get that. Thank you very much. Somebody's asking if there are any fish frying recipes in there. Um, well, there's all salmon and lobster and clams and uh, fish, fish, no. Good suggestion for the next one, which is in the works. Yeah, stewed crab probably did a lot of those, huh? <laughs> stewed crab <laughs> and the vessel I made it in are buried deep in my backyard. <laughs> we should have shot that as the well digging because I had to go deep. It kept wanting to rise to the surface. Yeah. Not okay. unlike the undead. That's right. All right, there we go. There we go. Let's call that good. Okay, so somewhere down there might be something that's cool enough to actually eat. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think we can find them. Want to give it a shot? Yes. All right, let's do it. I'll let you dig down to find one that's edible. Wait. <laughs> hot. Real hot. I should have sprinkled salt over those, but those are really good. Those are really good. Could use some more. What? Those are really good. Yeah. Oh, hmm? that's good. We no. did. We, somebody was going to bring us some some salt. Oh, mm. Ryan, or anybody in the back, a in a period correct Ziploc, is, is some uh, chunky salt, and then there's a tin vessel right beside it. If you'd put the salt in the vessel and bring it up, no one will know the better. Uh, that's a bladder. No one will know the bladder. And maybe, you know, you'd get more salt if you would have put more of that cheese in there. I was going with a half cup, but yeah, we could have easily put a cup and a half in. It would still be good. Uh, here's a question for you. you. This is from Miles. Miles. Uh, since Michael's heritage comes partially from France, yeah. any New Orleans-style recipes? Well, I don't know, because I didn't research that. But the Arcadians, Acadians, um, are working their way down and, and sometimes hitting directly uh, Louisiana. I, I don't I don't have any idea. There's one recipe in that book that I've I've I'm just imagining is I'm sure fine, but it just doesn't sound like it would work. And it's called a curry of cod. Do you remember that one? Well, yeah, it's etched as if with acid in my memory banks. Um, it's I mean if you like cod, it's really good. And I I, I don't, but it's a mild. Um, you know you're. Uh, I, I bought fresh uh, fillets. They are very sensitive to breaking apart, so you kind of have to be careful um, getting them warmed up. But at the last minute, you're adding a sauce to it and then breaking it apart, and um, and it it's it tastes great. Uh, we've got a couple of comments on super chat that just came go. in. Wild Pinto says, "Thank you, John and Michael. Just ordered a hard bag." You two are a great team. You know, I'm, I'm going to do one special Bill over here. Bill Klum is in Super Chat. It says, in Michael's modern day family spread across, I'm sorry, is Michael's modern day family spread across the U.S. or have they stayed in the same area his ancestors settled? I think it's directly representative of my parental abilities that they live so far away. <laughs> Each time they move, it's farther away. I have a my, my younger daughter lives in Knoxville, Tennessee. My dad lives in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And my older daughter, lives, uh, Rosie, lives in, uh, in uh, Taos, New Mexico. Um, but they all, we don't get together often, but when we do, it's, it's just a riot. They are so into the family history that they've changed their last names to the original spelling, D-R-A-G-A-U-D. So they're, they have hyphenated last names, the D-R-A-G-A-U-D hyphen, uh, their husband's name in, in both cases. So that's pretty cool. It's helped, you know, Rosie had, I don't know, seven years of uh, French, and Molly had four or so, and that's helped a lot uh, in researching in France, because I don't speak French. The only effort I ever got in my life was first semester French. Um, so that's been very helpful that they can read things that I don't understand. It's not everything is translated. So, nope, no, no relatives close. Can we get a... I don't know. I don't, I, people want to see those rings again. Well, should I come they, over they here? Can you go to the... Don't, don't, no, no you'll no, change sorry, the focus. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> don't do that. I'm not, I'm going to eat one. 
Yeah, those look good. There you go. That batter really stuck to them, huh? Yep. Yeah, yeah that looks yep. great. Yep. The large grain salt is fighting us a little bit, but it and is. they do. I think they do need that a little bit of salt. Yeah. And I, well, uh, you know, but, it's not the recipe, but I would have maybe salt. You're right, more cheese, definitely, but I, it's, yeah, I put in more salty. than a half a cup as it was, but right. uh, yeah. So I more importantly salt. than the salt, how does the cheese come through? How is that? I think it wants to burn a little easily um, in here, uh, but I've got this pretty hot. Um, I, I've never had to, I've, I've done it for two different years of the eight years I've been re, uh, doing demonstrations, a field I've done, I've done onion rings and it's pretty foolproof. I, kids can help any part of this process depending on their age. Maybe not that one. Well, it depends on their age and if the parents are, hey, there's band-aids, there's gauze. <laughs> right, <laughs> and, a burn unit. And then we send them down three tenths to the uh, yeah. 18th century uh, physician. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing another. So in, in conclusion, the parmesan's oh. good. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I taste the parmesan. For me, you, I would continue to push the parmesan up as a, as a, uh, you know, add a little nutmeg to give it just that, and then I, I think I'd continue to, if I were adjusting the recipe, mm -hmm. I'd continue to push up the parmesan until it really was standing out there. Um, right now, yep. it's, it's down in the mix. Still good. It's still very good. And it's oh, yeah. not your norm. What you get when you make them yourself at a restaurant, this tastes different than that. Right. And um, the Parmesan pushed up and the salt pushed up would make it even better. Yeah. But um, because it's a beer batter, you, you taste that. I used, um, I just had regular beers at home. I, I If you were to use a, um, a darker ale um, or even a darker beer, you'd get more of that hoppy, that tangy in the back taste. Well, we don't want that because the recipe has, has the... <clears throat> has the um, the batter here, which is just flour and cream and yeah. salt and pepper and uh, some eggs, and that's yeah. it. That, that's all there is here. Mike. I put some beer. In. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a minute real quick, and I just want to do some housekeeping. I know that you wanted to read some names for Patreon. Yes. Yeah. So um, every week that we do a live stream. Uh, I try to get the, the the brand new Patreon folks and uh, Townsend's Plus people and all that good stuff. So I have some uh, wonderful uh, names of brand new Patreon people. Uh, and forgive me on these pronunciations. I think you guys just come up with these names just to trick me. But uh, Sabarno, uh, Martha Scott, uh, Vicki Stevens. So we know Vicki Stevens. Um, Silliard Pustafalvi, uh, Kokora, Jessica Gasparini, Joris, Lakeside Industries, that's a little easier, uh, The Stumbling <laughs> Princess, Tracy Carnes, uh, Kim O'Donohue, and Liz Eddy. Those are brand new Patreon folks. Uh, right. Also... Um, brand new U screen folks, uh, Nancy N, Michael S, Andrew S, Mariah W, Sarah W. Also, uh, while we're on that topic, um, Townsend's Plus, uh, that's our uh, streaming platform where you'll find the, uh, the YouTube content that we normally do without the ads that you would find on YouTube, of course, and um, special content. And right now I've just started a new series uh, where I'm reading through journals and kind of cross-referencing them and having fun with that. So uh, if you're on Townsend's Plus, make sure to check out the uh, brand new, you can hit the new arrivals or new videos tab there and you will find the new John's journal episodes popping up on there. So make sure to check that out. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the thing that brings us here today, the special event is Michael's cookbook. And now we're at, there. Are, Almost, there are 700, almost 750 people in here. Right. Some of them haven't heard about the right, cookbook right. yet. So, so let's talk about Quickly, that. let's go through uh, the reason why, one of the reasons why we're doing this. Well, it's not the only reason, because, you know, some, and Michael DeGruy's here, so why not just do a live stream, right? It's Friday. Right. Friday. You know, kick back, do a live stream. Yep. Let's go to the kitchen and cook live. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we decided we would talk about Michael's brand new. Today is the first day that it's available to hit a button and order me uh, Colonial Comfort Foods. 
and um, amazing cookbook, 75 plus recipes. Uh, you did a great job. The photography, Thank you. Um, the recipe, choosing recipes, big pretty pictures, um, great layout so that you can figure out, you know, what is the original recipe like? How am I going to do that in real life? Which is the real challenge when you open up an 18th century cookbook. Yeah. It's like, uh, what is this, a word problem in math class in the eighth grade or something? Um, so, uh, Michael, tell, tell us about that. It's um, using my history as a guide for you to use your own history. Um, I'm combining my ancestry search with the foods uh, those folks, folks found and consumed along the way. And each time they move, it's a different country, and it's a whole different way of preparing sometimes the same basic starter, but it has a whole different way of, of baking it or, or the ingredients are different. Um, I, I'm encouraging you to, uh, to conduct your own uh, personal research, no matter how far back you can get. Um, you don't have to go back to Charlemagne to, to have a, an enjoyable experience. And I, I picked recipes that are Michael proof, so there's certainly no reason why you can't do these. And there's no perfect right way. These folks these recipes were only available to the rather rich. And so people were just um, using what they had for the most part. And even if you were fortunate enough to have a, a cookbook, a, re a book of receipts, um, you still, if you didn't have a beef and you had lamb or you had mutton, that's what you used. And so you almost can't go wrong with these things. I, the only times I had to do things over, and I had to do several of them over, it was to try to figure out my temperatures and my times, because they don't mention those. They're it's just in an oven. They have ways of figuring out what the temperatures are. Um, uh, and, I, and I have charts in there uh, of, of how to do that, but it's, yeah. it's pretty much foolproof. I, I want you to be excited about your history. I think we, there's no end to the excitement we could have. And, and when you're doing this and you're seeing where these folks moved, you're seeing that this old ball we're living on is kind of small. You know, we're all connected, and, and especially by food. So I'd love for you to take an opportunity to try this. I'm dropping the link in the chat right now for this cookbook. And, uh, you know, I was saying about this earlier, Michael, there are a lot of people that I know that say, oh, I'm going to write a book one day, and they never do because yep. that's a hard thing to do. So congratulations. Yeah. Well, I think it was my wife's idea to write a book. I think she would just trying to get me out from underfoot. <laughs> but um, I, um, I had a couple of ideas, and then I had the opportunity to edit a friend's uh, uh, book, uh, not connected to food in any way, but I thought, I could do that. And I got so much, I care so much about what I'm doing and, and the educational aspects of it when I'm on the road at, at events and stuff. And so I just started, and, and then um, it was just at like a two and a half year thing and, and then I retired the end of the year and, and then I could go full-time at it and we knocked her out by I don't know April May-ish and worked out the bugs and and here it is and I could never have done it without your support I really couldn't I've got such great friends um, I, although I shot the shots um, I borrowed a, my one of my friends a professional photographer some of his equipment uh, um, and, and it just has turned out really nice I'm very proud of it Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But what's more important is it's just another way for me to get the word out to care about yourselves and your pasts and how you got here and, and just show your relatives honor for the, everything they went through so that you can be here now. So that's what it's all about. All right, we're going to go to card real quick. And uh, while we do that, you guys can go check out the link for this cookbook and we'll be right back.
So uh, my question on this recipe is, uh, is there any nutmeg in this one? Yes, Whew. but that in the past <sighs> doesn't seem to stop you from, uh, from adding some. I was, I was getting concerned because, <laughs> I mean, two out of three is not a good number. So, I mean, three out of three is going to be no. disaster, fail, you know, see you by later kind of a thing. But <laughs> oh, thankfully, no. Thankfully, but we're here. You may find so, that you need more. This recipe is one from eight years ago. Yeah, it was the first one we did together, and uh, it's uh, not in the cookbook, uh, but it's um, it's an oldie and goodie. And I think it's of all the YouTube videos that we've done, I, I, this one has had the most views of mine. So uh, we'll we'll uh, pay honor to that. I'm just to that. I think I, you're gonna look it up. We're gonna, yeah, gonna do a mind meld and get that out of your head. So. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So um, this is a a good. Well, let me read the recipe first. This is the first time around. I hadn't found a, an 1800s recipe for it, um, and I did as much research as I could, and I tried to get rid of all the new stuff from the taverns and this place and that place that all claim they invented it. What I found in my research was. People in the Ottoman Empire, people of where Turkey, Syria, and all are now, they were taking a hard-cooked egg and wrapping minced meat around it and frying it. So this, <coughs> the, the concept goes way back. Right. Um, this one is, the, is, is um, believed to be the first European printed recipe for scotch eggs. It's uh, from uh, Maria Eliza Rundell, 189 is the version I have, I, this recipe is not in that. In the 1812 mm -hmm. um, reprint, it's in there. So scotch eggs, boil hard five pullets eggs. A pullet's a young female right. chicken. And when, when chickens start to lay eggs, their eggs are a little tiny. So these, are, these would be very small eggs. And without removing the white, cover completely with a fine relishing force meat, in which let scraped ham or chopped anchovy bear a due proportion. In this case, because the first time I believe I used veal and ham, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I used uh, beef and anchovies, okay. minced up so that it would just disappear, we'd have that right, right. taste. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Fry of a beautiful yellow brown and serve with a good gravy in the dish. Mm. So in the cookbook, I, you have a force meat recipe, and that's what I've done. And 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 force meat is just a guide. Uh, it can be darn near anything. Um, yeah. But I, in this case, I have um, bacon and beef, anchovies, mushroom ketchup, mushrooms, uh, mace. Uh, got some all some Jamaican pepper, which is all spice. Um, um, the dreaded nutmeg, um, and that's. It. And lots of other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like super meatballs. They are super meatballs on steroids. Right. And then as a as a, a good gravy, instead of... A good gravy is a very highly seasoned, uh, thin gravy. And I chose... I thought this had so much flavor and taste going on. I didn't need to compete with anything. So I just... Uh, instead of making a, a roux of flour and uh, butter, equal parts. I did it with flour and bacon grease, just cause I so, can, at least for now. And right. um, and then some salt and pepper. So that's mm -hmm. what we're gonna kind of pour over this. Okay. So if things go well, we're gonna cook it, we're gonna cut it in half, we're gonna pour some gravy over it and test drive it, okay? So once again, just uh, like the potatoes, this works a lot, and you want a thin wrapping. You don't want it real thick. Um, you want a. Thankfully, uh, the eggs already cooked, so we don't need to worry too much yeah, about that. No, no. Just, just trying to get this done. Yes. Right. So, um, this looks when it's refrigerated, it doesn't stick to your hand so much. No, it's not complicated. <clears throat> and we're gonna take a little more here. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's gonna be fine. All right. Oh, you are such a. A little monster sometimes. So there we are. I'm gonna pop this baby in if you're ready, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go for it. Let's give it a shot here. Okay. Let that go for a second. We'll do another one. Yeah. 
I think that the pullets eggs would help. Definitely. That, that these are... If you can't find pullets eggs, which you can't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Russell a thrush to the ground or something. You, well, you might find <laughs> quail's eggs. And that would be a good... I mean, they're decent sized. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they're findable. And much easier to wrap, too. Right. And they would make really cute little hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, and then people would think, oh, I've got a meatball. And then, like, there's a and boiled so egg more. inside there. <laughs> yeah, I have a meteorite-sized meatball. Yeah. yeah. It would be like a geode. <laughs> it would be. Mark R. in the chat just giving us the old cool hand Luke here. What's that it mean? He says he can eat 58, because then I just don't believe it. Well. Well. Um, well, take his word for it. Uh, in the super chat, we got, it looks like, I don't, I don't know, somebody 85, uh, happy Oktoberfest in the 19th or 18th century German American Oktoberfest lore. What you got, John? Oktoberfest lore? Well, there probably is some wonderful Oktoberfest lore uh, for German slash uh, North America. So there's a, a lot of German culture that comes into North America in these kind of different phases. And, uh, but I don't have any of that kind of lore off the top of my head. Um, it's one of those researchy things that, that I would need to do, right? And but, then, you know, Mike, oh, as a good example, though, um, if you read, we read uh, Sleepy Hollow, and he's connecting that New York area that has a lot of German heritage with a bunch of those stories in the Headless Horseman story is specifically a German thing that's brought over. So um, there you go. There you go. That's what I got. Uh, Michael is in Super Chat for an early American hyphen Townsend's collab. Say that again. Okay. I didn't hear. Thank you. Well, that, Should you, I, uh, yeah. Look at those things. Would you look at those things? Yeah. Those, those look really good. Seems like everything today is fried. Uh, every, most everything in Michael's life is fried. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, if you want to cut it in half, and we've got a uh, little of that uh, white sauce right Gravy. there. Gravy. I'll Don't cut, cut yours. Yeah, and I um, I didn't do a really good job of pinching the edges together. Were you to do that, it, it wouldn't pull apart. If my lard, if my oil were a little less hot, it wouldn't have pulled apart. So You like to keep your oil hot. You, well, you need, when you're using pork or anything raw, I'd like to, yeah. All right? Uh, <laughs> that was a fail. Okay. No, no. Did my the, egg go? That is a fail. So, oh. If we can... Hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you know what the temperature is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there. Oh, is that not done? Uh, this side's done. Right, we'll we'll, we'll do leave that. that one over there. Yep. Oh, boy, Michael. You said this was going to go great. Live was going to go well, great. I said... I didn't say I'm always right. There we go. There Ready? We go. Yeah, but right here yeah. on this guy. You got it. So instead of it being a good gravy, it's a... It's a great gravy because oh, it's got okay. bacon in it. I'm just going to come up with my own name. Yeah. Oh, but... go to it. Maddie okay. B says hi from New Zealand, best channel on YouTube. Thank you so All much. Right. Thank you uh, very, very much. kind, very kind. Jeez. There's a lot of channels on there are. YouTube. Um, are you ready? Well, I would say cheers, but I don't know how you would... Uh, we're going to figure it out. Here, click, hang on. We're um, going to cheer it. Hang on, we, we um, started something. I'm, gonna... I'm worried it's going to be so hot that it's going to burn me. No, so. here, come on. We could, okay. Man up here. You're going to go gonna... for it. I'm going for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really good, though. <laughs> I'm going to let mine cool for it's a second. It's worth the burnt gums. <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> Well, that cools. Uh, John John brought up a really great idea, oh, and I, I should have thought of it. I did. Where we talk about Michael's new Instagram yeah. feed, oh, which dear. is right. pretty awesome. So, talk about it. Well, John and Ryan thought it'd be a good idea. I'm not on Facebook or anything. I'm I'm not that sharp to be able to figure that stuff out. But um, I'm going to interrupt real quick. I yep. just dropped the link for his Instagram. Go check it out. Follow. Yep. Me. It's just Michael Dragoo, that's it. Um, so I started posting a couple of recipes, one a week from the book. And um, after today, I'm going to start just doing the recipes 
from old recipes. And uh, if I get good feedback, they'll be in the next cookbook. And if I don't, they won't. Um, and I answer everything promptly, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm not a slave to it, and, but I, I really think there's a lot of connection with what we're doing out there. And you've experienced it with your YouTube uh, family, obviously, um, two million subscribers, just about. And, and I'm experiencing that in a small and manageable manner now. So I would love if you find a recipe that you have found a different way of preparing or you think I got it wrong, I'm the first one to want to hear that. I'm not trying to modernize this. I don't want to find out that that's not how you do it. Well, that is exactly how you did it in the old time, it, it, 250 years ago, 300 years ago. But if, if your interpretation of what I, what I did is, is different, I'd love to hear that. Because um, if I try that and it's right, I'll change it. Because it's, there's always room for improvement on this thing. So. I think the fun part about, you know, I mentioned the recipes from the 18th century being like a math problem. And that is, um, that can be challenging, but it also opens up the, the, your ability to, to uh, improvise and, and, you know, experiment with a recipe, which is really nice. And so Michael's done some experimenting here for you, right? And he's modernized some of these recipes so that yeah. you can figure out what to do. Um, but that doesn't mean that you don't have permission to attack them any way you need to do. It's like, well, right. I would have done it this way. And that's exactly what would happen in the time period. Yes. Nobody looked at those cookbooks and said, well, I have to do it exactly like no. this. Everyone said, oh, there's a neat idea for some food. Oh, I think I will do it like this. Right. So, right. you know, in this case, uh, uh, it's like, well, I don't have pullets eggs. Well, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to use regular eggs, you know, and it'll be a little more challenging. But it works out, and yeah. it's super, super tasty. Um, you would never have, I, I think that the anchovies really work out really well in this coating they, because they don't pop out and say, ew, anchovies, right? right? I used three fillets. Right. I didn't know how many to use. Right. Um, you put them in until... And they hit the right note. They're salty and they give that right. whatever we call it in it's a vogue term of umami, yeah, umami today. Yeah. yeah, so sure. Um, so super uh, fun and tasty recipe thank you. here. So thank you very, very, very nice. And I think I think this was even better than how they turned out in eight years ago. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Um, the the ham because it was cured. Yeah. And it wasn't it was air fighting. cured. Yeah. I and they don't. In this time period, they haven't figured out the screw inside the cylinder to grind meat. That shows up in the 1850s in Germany. Um, so they are mincing, 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 and then they're putting that mixture into a mortar and pestle and reducing it to be fibrous. And right. I could have spent more time making the ham fibrous because right. it just didn't right. want to behave. It needs to be like a pate. It, it yeah. does, yes. Right, so yeah. you, you turn it into this, you know, slime basically yep. so it works out really well um, but it it does take some some real effort so super super thank wonderful you. thank you michael very much yes, thank you yeah. in super chat we have a couple of things that have just popped in um neforos i believe it's how you pronounce it love the videos any chance of an ebook release oh ebook you know what I, that hadn't been on my list uh but it can be maybe well, so we'll have to fight. <laughs> we'll have to fight over that. Probably, you know. Here, let's, I'm good. I'd have uh, to. It's well, our arm wrestling or something. Well, it's a different yeah. format, right? We'll, well have to. We'll have to look into well, it. Yeah, and yeah. It out. We'll work on the concept. Yep. And then uh, it looks like Raquel is in here. Hi from Brazil. I just want to live with you guys. That's well, because, the only because you don't know us. Yeah, we, <laughs> we really don't have enough room uh, over here. Although, you know, the parlor is all cleaned up. Yeah, so. it is. I mean, that's pretty pretty amazing. Um, we have been working on lots of uh, fun projects coming up and um, having a lot of, uh, you know, Brandon has been busy. You did, well, I showed you the picture of, of the, the, new, the new work area for yes, videos, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, yeah. lots of stuff is being What's worked on. What's going on, yeah. And Michael's working on more cookbooks. Yeah, got a couple more in the works. We'll see if, how this goes first. Um, yeah. Uh, but um, well, so far this has been painless, right? Painless. <laughs> 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 less. 
Drowning would hurt worse. Okay, <laughs> this is what we need to do right now. We, I'd, what I'd like to do is dig in a little bit more into the cookbook. And if maybe you could talk to us if, about some of your favorite recipes, maybe read some of those helpful hints, show some pictures and that sort of thing, Michael. Oh, I'm sure. Let's pass her over. Well, I was surprised uh, with the broths. Some of them are not so complicated you can't do them. There's just many steps and it takes, you just gotta let things simmer and, and get, the, get the flavors out of stuff. And then you're filtering out the solids and you do something else. And then you're sending it through, um, I used linen because that's what they had. Um, and those are the most impossible kind of videos to do on YouTube. It's like uh, nobody, nobody wants to click on an, an, another soup recipe or, you know, let's do a broth. But they're the foundations of some of these recipes that make right. them what they are. Yeah. And they're, they're, some are just so good. There's a... There's a sauce that's made from uh, several different uh, seafood um, livers, and, and uh, it's really uh, not liver like the filtery part. Oh. Um, I've, I like things that I was sure I wouldn't. And I've, I've just, oh, some of these yeah. essence of whatever's, these, sure. these, they're so almost elegant. I just, in there, sometimes in simplicity, but sometimes not. You'd think you'd know inside of your own cookbook where this stuff was at. You know, I don't. <laughs> I refer back to when I said I wasn't as sharp as you think I was. Well, didn't. it's funny. I never know where anything is in the catalog. Hey, you lay that out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's an awkward moment. Isn't you, it? Well, there, I mean, sauces and anchovy sauces. Yeah. And... Well, um, I've got an anchovy sauce here. Did we as... do it? We did an anchovy something, didn't we? Mm -hmm. The one with that anchovy in with it? With Michael? Yeah, yeah, anchovy liqueur. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there we go. So here's an anchovy sauce. And I tell you the recipe. I give you helpful hints, ingredients, the recipe. And then generally, because I needed a, I had a space, so that's when these you don't say show up. But here's a, a you don't say for the anchovy sauce. In colonial times, one could choose from several sauces to serve with meat and fish. Mushroom, walnut, and anchovy, and the anchovy mentioned above, to name a few. In the early 1800s, an Englishman asked a couple of drugstore owners, John Lay and William Perrins, to create his favorite sauce from his time governing in India. After some experimentation, the fermented brew was a hit, and the vulnerable Worcestershire sauce was born. Lee and Perrins' Worcestershire sauce is still produced to this day. Around the 1860s, anchovy sauce seems to have drifted away from common American usage. Mushroom ketchup was replaced with the now favored Worcestershire sauce, but all was not lost for the unloved anchovy. Take a peek at the ingredients of pretty much any bottle of Worcestershire sauce and you'll find anchovies listed as an ingredient. Yeah. It's that kind of thing. So I tell you where pigs come from. I tell you when potatoes show up here and just stuff like that. Sometimes I go into depth. If the, um, if the cookbook author is interesting, um, I go into depth and, and talk about them. So it just, once again, on several different levels, you can just look at it as a picture book. You can look at it as as spirited writing, um, or I still you, can't believe they left behind mushroom ketchup. It's just like, why would anybody do that? I don't know. Add some anchovies and call it something else, and I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. I don't know. And yes, tips, broth tips. Thank you. Well, uh, generally, you cook it so long that the meat turns to rags which is what they like to talk about. Yes. It's like meat turning to rags. Turning to rags. And, um, and you, you generally use it as scrag end of uh, something. Scrag is, is like up here yeah, behind the, the yep. neck. Yeah. So yep. the, oh. the neck. Yeah. And <laughs> like I said, I've got helpful hints. I have a section on, on I think we did, we did a video on some of the cooking iron that was used in that time. I go into a little more depth with that. I have a whole helpful hints section, and and there are hints like this. I, I show you the recipes. Um, when an English recipe there, there is talking about a cut of meat, it's not necessarily what you'd find at your local store. And so I show you the British cuts of of beef, and the um, American cuts of beef, so that if it's calling for a a rump, you know you're looking for either a tenderloin or a bottom sirloin. It's that kind of thing. If you go with just the name they used, you're going to get a different cut of meat and it's not going to perform in the same manner. So it's just stuff like that. It's just 
Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you feel that there are sections I need to, to expound more upon or didn't touch at all, for example, different cuts of pork, or, uh, and, and I've, I would expect other hapless mammals maybe have different, you know, and I only did British because most of the recipes in this book are, are English, but um, mm -hmm. Germany, uh, France, they may have different cuts of meat as well. I suspect they probably do. So, so there. So lots of egg recipes? A handful, <laughs> they're easy. <laughs> how, about, uh, how about lots of fish recipes? Michael More than usually I... <laughs> brings the fish recipes to the channel, even though, of course, he doesn't like fish. I hate, I, I don't like fish. Um, hate is such an ugly word. I really despise I fish. I didn't say it. You and say I don't it. know that you're in love with all fishes known to man, are you? Do you like fish? Well, I, I try not to say it on the channel when I'm cooking it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a pork cutlet a recipe that's wonderful. Uh, the gravy we serve with it is just fantastic. And there was room for an a don't, you don't say. So I say, although there's evidence of pigs rooting around Europe and Asia 40 million years ago, they're not native to North America. Hogs made their first appearance via Columbus, who at the insistence of Queen Isabella, brought eight oinkers with him on his way back to the New World in 1493. Their next appearance, appearance was courtesy of Hernando de Soto in 1539 via Tampa Bay, Florida, with 13 of the little darlings in tow. Hernando Cortez followed de Soto's lead in the mid-1500s, bringing, bringing a herd of snorters with him through Mexico. Hot on their curly tails were Sir Walter Raleigh, hauling hoofers with him to Janestown in 1607. So it's that kind of thing. It's, um, it's manageable. It's, you can digest it without breaking a sweat. Just little things. So. How many different words did you use to, to describe pig? 19. Oh, there you go. Well, my editor, bless her little heart, uh, I wrote this thing once. I was pretty well done with it. And she, <laughs> and then started, she said, start over. And she said, well, uh, this is a great, it reads well. I've hardly done a lot of changes to it, but I don't know that it's yours. There's no Michael in it. Mm. She didn't read the fine print of what that meant. But so I put Michael in it. So mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. putting up with these videos with him and me, then you're, you'll, this will be an easy read for you. If you uh, find us hard to take, then it won't be an easy read for you. So. <laughs> There's a lot of Michael in there, for good or bad. Yeah, yeah they, uh, John Skinner's in Super Chat. My husband wants me to make mushroom ketchup. Thank you. I think that was sarcastic. I'm not sure. No. Wah, wah, wah. no. That's no. wonderful. No. It's a good thing. No. No. Yeah, well, and if I'm not sure... On some of these things, I don't know how long they should be kept refrigerated or otherwise. So I'll give you a safe, um, based on what the federal government uh, suggests is safe, you know, like, and there's an icing. They were using um, um, uh, egg yolks, uh, egg uh, whites. And I've got you putting that on the cookies or the cake or whatever, and then letting set, cutting, getting the oven at the lowest setting, like 200 or whatever your oven goes to, and just letting it set a moment, and then refrigerating that. I've tried to be as helpful as I could there without getting my butt suit off, but um, you always use your best judgment at these. So somebody asked, how do these meals treat your gut? I think that a lot of times, because they, they use things like lard and things, people assume that everything in the 18th century eats heavy, but that's not the case. That's not the case. I didn't treat salads at all. That's going to be in the next one. Um, but um, um, although it's not the case, most of mine are heavy. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, and I don't know if I'm not sure how to take. I, it, that's a t difficult question because I think people react to foods a lot differently today than they used to back then. Uh, we have sensitive stomachs. Today, a lot of people have uh, food sensitivities that, that they didn't have in the time period. Um, maybe they just didn't know it, and I they think did. That part of that is um, that some of the stuff we put in things to last unrefrigerated forever. Right, I think has something to do with that yeah, too. Yeah, there could be a lot of different reasons why. Yeah. That. I, I tend to find that uh, since almost everything, basically everything that we find in 18th century cookbooks and what you'll find in here, are cooking from scratch, you know? It doesn't have a lot of these weird non-ingredients in right. it like most modern foods do. Right. And so you'll probably find that they treat you better than a lot of modern recipes do. Yeah. And uh, 
there are times when I'll tell you a couple of different ways of getting there. For example, the, we had a couple here that could have gone in the oven. They wouldn't have had to have been introduced into lard at all. And that, that, you know, so if you do have sensitivities, if you have flour sensitivities, there are several recipes in here that don't touch a wheat flour. Um, yeah, and you could yep. probably substitute something that yep. was, you know, rice flour or whatever yep. Yep. if you're not using it as a bread product. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of different options. So it's time to, unfortunately, wrap this up. Oh, Let's wow. do final thoughts, final words. John, what do you have to say about this cookbook? To keep well, you know, I, I fought Michael over this cookbook for basically months and months. And uh, you've, you've done a tremendous job. Uh, it, has been a, it has been a good process because yeah. while we print a lot of different books, they're all facsimile books, and this is not that. And so we've had to kind of work through the process in a new and, and uh, we've learned a lot and I'm really excited by that. I think the, the output has been tremendous. I think you've done a, a, an amazing job putting together the information and the pictures. Uh, so really fun process and a neat book to work with and, and uh, see how it comes out. So excellent job, Michael. Just Very much. tremendous. Sure. Um, there's, there's a, there are a lot of, you know, cookbooks that are like this, sort of collections of historical recipes. Uh, I haven't seen one that's been done as well as this one. So not com Especially not combined. The ones I have, which I, did, I hate to say detest because there's some right. people still living perhaps, but yeah. I don't modernize any of these. Right. I'm not saying, hey, you'll like this better if you put Bisquick yeah. in it. I, right. That's not the recipe anymore. Right. You might as, might as well go buy yeah, the latest from... Get something else. Yeah. 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 And then well, order out from Applebee's or something. Right. Yeah. And, and then there's just the the combining your relatives, yeah. English, mm -hmm. I'm guessing. Yeah. I don't know how far back you can go, but over time, those years and areas, years. yeah, changed and changed, <laughs> and they got here somehow, and things changed. And um, yeah. I just think it's really important to not forget your past. Right. That's so, what this is all about. So. Uh, a neat, neat um, way to connect with um, your with yourself in a lot of different ways. And, and I, I've talked about this in the channel in different kind of situations and different kinds of videos, but understanding who we are, um, our, our ancestors, you know, our past generations, our mother and father, and you know, however far it goes back, it's part of our very identity. It's how, how we know who we are, right? And um, it, in this case, it's, uh, it's a cross-cultural connection. Uh, we are trying to reach through multiple generations and connect with people from 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago. And the best way to do that is food, right? So today we do cross-cultural things. We go to some other country and we, we, we try out their food. And that's how we know what they're, part of what their lives are like. And the, oh, I can't believe they eat this or whatever, right? Um, we do that with people in history. We, we eat that food, and that's a way for us to understand them and understand us. Yeah. So. Well, that recipe we just did with the hard-boiled eggs that were battered. And mm -hmm. I'm reading the comments there. <clears throat> well, that's it. That's what we do. We call this in Spain. Well, we call exactly. this in China. We call this in Indonesia. We get right. the, all over the world. It's Once again, right. it's not such a big place. We're all right. connected. And we all like yummy food. I've been around. waiting for John Talley to show up today, and he showed up in a big way. If the food in the cookbook don't cause at least moderate gas, I'll be disappointed. <laughs> oh, Good food fuels the exhaust system. Oh, dear. Okay. Then, John Talley. Uh, we've got another super chat from James Ellsworth that doesn't have any comments. So thank you very much. Thank you. That. Yes. All right. So we yeah. get a lot of support by a lot of different people. Yes. Uh, and, you know, Michael's feeling some of that support, right? Adding to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you guys are part of that. You're here in this live stream today um, helping us out. You know, you share the videos, you talk about them with friends. I, I've heard so many different kind of funny stories. It's like, well, I've been watching your videos for a couple of years and I was talking to a friend of mine and I said something about, about your videos and, and he said, oh, I've been watching that guy for... <laughs> so it's, well, it's really funny to hear those stories. My younger, my younger daughter's husband um, is a professional bass player mm -hmm. uh, and he's got five golds and a, and a platinum. But he was in England mm -hmm. playing and some guy on the bus, some roadie guy, I, he's wanting to know what, what Isaac's doing and Isaac's watching one of the videos. And he's, 
Oh, I, I know. He, he watched. He was a regular. He watched all of. He knew all the videos. And I just, how does that even happen? How does that happen? It's because you guys out there are doing yeah. what you do. That's yeah. the reason why that yeah. happened, right? Uh, you guys share the videos, and uh, you know the the support, the moral support that we get from that kind of thing is yeah. is how we continue to say, oh, we we do this for a reason, right? Yes. Um, we don't just do this because you know. Well, part of it is we do it because we're fun, but the only reason why we stand in front of a camera with a red blinky light <laughs> is because of you guys out there. So. Right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, thank you. If you're on Townsend's Plus or if you're a member on uh, YouTube, again, thank you. Uh, if you buy merch, super duper thank you. And just being here today, commenting, watching, again, you're an amazing supporter. Thank you, Michael, for bringing oh, amazing thank you food. Thank you so much. Right? He brought the food. He did all this prep work. He's probably been working on it for three weeks if I know Michael Dragoo. <laughs> no, and, uh, but he brought all this yummy food yep. and we've enjoyed every bit of it. All very good. And uh, thank you, Aaron, Caleb. Yes. I, I just want to say one thing, just for the people that have stuck around so far, the next time you see us live, there will be a special merch item that you can wear. Whoa, a special merch item you can wear? Yes. We got lots of things to talk about. Well, so... We're busy having fun stuff. Oh, thank you, Ryan, for being here. Um, Ryan's been busy, busy, busy. So um, we're making him do double duty here. Yep. Um, being, I should make you wear that funny hat every day. Anyway, thank you guys for being here today. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a wonderful evening. Have a great day. <laughs>